What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back to the walkthrough. So, went ahead and switched up some gear. I ended up getting most of the Master Archer set just going through, so I went ahead and put all that on. Uh, not a lot that's going to help me here, but the extra life and 4% damage taken will be useful. So, anyway, we are going to be going up the ladder. Uh, you can approach this, uh, this zone that we're about to do from both sides, but I feel that going up first is a little bit easier. Uh, since this guy jumped down before, we need to re-kill him. Shouldn't say re-kill him, because we never actually killed him the first time. That's why that cloud was still there. Uh, so, I'm going to head on up here. And up at the split, we're going to be going to the right first. Now, first thing we're going to do is actually lure on over... Mr. Oni Cyclops. Actually, I'm going to hold up. I only have two more bullets left. Now, keep in mind that when you're fighting on cliffs like this, Yatsu no Kami is just going to fall off. Kind of how you saw right there. So, you can't really rely on him to, to get your damage in. But, pull him over to a, uh, a side. should be all right. Actually, we got a couple points to spend as well. Uh, and the Shifling Tree, let's keep working on this. Key Recovery in Dark Realm is going to be great. And the Axe Tree, uh, let's get Spirit Wind. That's a good anti-human ability. It's a solid choice there. We'll pick that up. Uh, and the Ninja Tree, we can almost get Quick Change. We're not even, we're not that close on points. Uh, let's see. Got levitation already. Let's go ahead and pick up the stuff we're going to need to get access to that. And then as for the samurai tree, um, we're going to probably, we already picked up our, our damage boost stamina. Now as a reminder, the main things, obviously you want to get flux and flux too. You want to pick up the purify realm and the running waters. Um, after you have those, you can really go wherever you want. Uh, let's see. I'm not using Dex at all. I'm not going to be using that. So I will probably keep working towards life. Because I can go up to there and go up to there. So that's just going to be more, more total health. Alright, and now we have a big dweller here. But if you look up top, see we have two more dwellers that have very good range when it comes to throwing rocks. And I am out of ammo on that. I'm going to lock that because having an item and equip drop rate is just going to be nice to have. Uh, now I'm going to hit this guy. Lumbar chop. This. And we're going to go up top to where those guys were to get their loot. And we have a, another Kodama coming up. So we have this guy right there. Let's get this. Kill the human. And get our Kodama. So now that we are at the top of this, we're actually going to work our way down. Uh, we can get rid of this cloud right now. Might as well. Um, Keikai. All right. Um, so there should be some loot off to the right. Then we have an aberrant here. And then a dweller. We're going to go up to the right here. Oh. 
him. And then Nurikabe. Now we don't have any reds, so it's just going to be a complete guess here. Let's go with Bao. Hey, perfect. First try. And let's get that hot spring. Gotta get all those hot springs. But next, we have another aberrant and a Korokoa is hiding inside of that, so we're gonna hang cannon it here, really mess it on up. And we're just going to whiff and do nothing, I guess. Uh, as you noticed right there, if you can hit him in the middle of his whole summoning thing, he won't actually be able to get off the fireballs. Alright, and just to show, right here, this right here, this is the ladder that's right at the start. So that's our shrine up here, up here. So you can kind of see how this just loops around. So we could have come up here, but it was just easier to fight our way over there and get the Kodama first. Uh, let's pop this. It's our Omeo locks. Um, path from Aberrant goes to shrine. So we're gonna drop down and take the same path, but go left this time. We can just go this way. There's that Aberrant that fell. Uh, so we have a Rukurobi and then a Dweller. Oh my god, it kind of missed. Kind of hit him, kind of missed. Still worked out all right. This. Uh, round to the back for a Kappa. Now, I also had this Kappa here in my notes. Um, I've heard a couple people mention that Kappas are completely random. So, you know, this is this is three for three on this Kappa being here, so maybe it's just a high chance of them appearing. Uh, but I do want to point out that you may not have a Kappa here. All right, and inside for the loot. And then a Dweller and a Scampus. On a long fluffy cat. Got this little piece of gold here. And you're about to see exactly why we didn't go from the back. Because this guy would have caused that snowball to fall and crush you. As it did right now. All those those four thousands that you just saw pop up, that was the snowball rolling on down and uh, crushing all the enemies that were in the path. Which would have been you if you had taken that path. But with all of them crushed, we can just go on down and we'll pick up the loot. So you can rest at the shrine if you want. Um, we're not going to. We're, we're looking good right now. Instead, we're going to go up those, whoop, up the double ladder. What's my stamina at? We are, oh, we're at 70.8. Oh, no, 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 no. Can't have that. Um, what can I... Nope. Hmm, not exactly a good bonus, but... There we go. We'll do that for now. Alright, uh, so you can kill this last dweller if you want. Oh god, no. Uh, Alright, this is a terrible, terrible situation. If you're ever in a situation like this, travel amulet was made for this exact reason. But, doing a travel amulet will reset the world state, so we might as well level up. Which isn't a terrible idea, because now I can probably 
Put back on that helmet, and no, I can't. 70.6. That's all right. So we're going to be uh, doing our stealthy approach to get past these guys to get back to where we wanted to go. That was just a very unfortunate landing there. Right past you. And we would have had uh, that Rurokobi, but we already killed him earlier. So we're all set on that front. Uh, so up ahead, there is going to be a dark zone, but we're going to skip it for the time being. There's a couple other things we want to do, so don't worry about that just yet. Um, one over here. Looks like we have nothing besides that grave. Uh, let me scroll some loots. Um, we can kill that aberrant. I guess that won't hurt. Let's blow him up. We can kill this guy if we want, but he's gonna, you're gonna have to come out here and fight me. I'm not fighting you in the dark zone. So we're going to go right and loop over here to where this dweller's at. We're going to kill him first and get his loot. That's fine. Then we're going to swing over here and drop down for little Kodama. Should be Kodama number five. Right, um, since that dweller didn't die, we're gonna finish him off real fast. We're gonna go over here and fight an Anki in the cloud. the Yankee dead, we can open this chest and get the key. That's my parry. All right, um, Hanking Cloud. Now we're gonna fight our way past some humans. I'll show you the uh, axe parry thing. It's actually like a block. Pretty useful. a cannon shot on a basic human. So we're going to kill them off. Um, and then in here, we have a Sudama. So we're going to give him something good and see what we can get. Um, let's see. We're going to give you a large spirit stone. Every now and then. Be like, oh my god, and give you a ton. And once you find more of these things, they'll actually, like, um, you can hear their dialogue, and sometimes they'll tell you what they want in particular. So, something to keep in mind for later. Uh, so with all of that cleared out, once again, still not going into the dark realm, we're going to go into the castle from behind. This is going to allow us to, what we're basically going to do here is uh, just sneak up on the Dark Realm from a backside, and it'll make it a little bit easier to get through. So kill him, a third set of armor has a Kodama behind it, right here. And that is all our Kodamas. Um, Scampus on the left before the stairs. Uh, using that, it's. I want to point out that this isn't a true parry, it's a block parry, so if you don't have heavy armor, it's probably not going to work. Because you need to have enough block stat that you can shrug off the hit to your key to, to trade with that move. Alright, so we're going to go up here, grab this loot, and pop open the door.
Right, so there should be a red lily ahead in here. These are nice. They'll they'll fully charge up your uh, Amrita. Uh, red lily ahead. Then go right for one soldier. And a mimic chest. Now, I wrote that this was a mimic in my loot, and this chest actually does happen to be a mimic. The way you can tell is that the three lines, how it has three instead of two. So, since we know it's a mimic... Oh, no, wrong thing. I want a whistle. And he'll pop it on open. Little Mr. Tanuki will come on out. And thumbs up. That. Had so many people be like, Cowboy, don't you know it's a mimic? And... I mean, I know, I know the three line thing, but I'm like trying to I'm trying to to read these notes, narrate the notes, and play without dying all at the same time. So, apologies. Sometimes I not paying attention to the little lines on the chest. Uh, anyway, then uh, the room on the right to backstab a guy and get some loot. Kill this guy. Now this is actually how you go through and get to the boss. We're not going to be going this way just yet. Uh, instead, there should be one more guy here that we can kill. It's pathing. We'll get this chest now. Just to get it out of the way. This guy's going to respawn, but we'll also kill him now. Here for another chest. And we're gonna go down the stairs. There's our shrine. Down these stairs. And mess up this. Now fight him right over here. There's actually a Kuroka in this room. So we want to fight this guy right where he's at so that we don't accidentally summon the Kuroka until we're ready. It's right there, hiding in that lantern, so... Dead, the Dark Realm is gone. And I got a soul core from him. So we're gonna go back up top. We're gonna hit the shrine, obviously. Now that we have purged the Dark Realm. Might as well get ourselves a nice save point right here below the boss. Need more stamina. Still not enough. What am I up to? I'm up to 50 stamina, too. Uh, let's see. Grab the loot back upstairs. So, chest on the left. And then we're just gonna clear through this stuff and get ourselves a hot spring around to the boss. Uh, a Rukurobi right here. Actually, I wrote that there was a dweller. Oh, hang on. I probably... Never mind. I got my notes backwards. I wrote, I wrote my notes based on going through here. Uh, chest on left. Dweller, Cyclops, Rupert. Root. No, oh, whatever. We'll just go around this way. That's fine. So we kill him. And out here is our dweller. I just wrote down the order of enemies wrong. This is where we had that Cyclops earlier. 
We already killed him, so he's not going to respawn because he's considered a Dark Realm enemy and we'll purge the Dark Realm. Right. Uh, this way for Rukarobi in the room with the small chest. That's how you know this guy is not a human, is even though we've broken his stamina, he's still, uh, still fighting. It's the, uh, easy way to tell if it's a Rukurobi or a human. Okay. Uh, this one has plot loot. Gonna be a little dialogue when I pick it up. You're stuck. Uh, plot loot, uh, door for loot and shrine and back upstairs, door for loot. And we are good to go. Plot loot, door for loot, shrine, back upstairs. We don't need the shrine right now. Uh, we gotta kill... No, we don't, we don't need to kill him. We can just ignore him. This one we're gonna kill because he's gonna probably aggro anyway. Okay. Um, up ahead we are going to have a... Aberrant. Clear this fog gate so that it doesn't get involved again. Not fog gate, but fog enemy. Him dead, he's permanently gone. And now the only thing we have is uh, that one aberrant and those two basic humans on the way to the boss. So let's get you. Hostile. Okay. Oh no! Alright. So this is interesting. Um, every now and then, if you're too close to him when fights are going down, he's gonna assume that, that you are hostile. That's exactly what happened here. Uh, he already assumed that we're that we're looking for a fight because he caught us doing all the fighting. So unfortunately, it didn't work out there. But uh, you know, it's, it's okay. We got our hot spring. Damn notification would show up. This one's a little finicky. Like it doesn't like giving you the notification sometimes. So, up ahead, we have the boss, Saito. Now, Saito is uh, essentially your evil twin. So, he's going to look just like your character. If you are a crazy waifu with colorful hair, Saito will be a crazy waifu with colorful hair. If you are a big crazy Viking dude like me, Saito will look like a big crazy Viking dude. Uh, but anyway, he's going to have the two spirits you didn't pick at the start. So, since we went with the brute spirit at the start, uh, he is going to have both the feral spirit and the uh, uh, what's God? What's the shadow crocodile's name? Iwagami? No. Anyway, he's going to have the phantom and the feral spirits. If you picked phantom, he would have feral and brute. If you picked feral, he would have phantom and brute. A um, couple things here. Um, try and save your yokai film for the dark face. He likes to pull out his yokai form, and so you're going to want to pull out yours. Otherwise, uh, he can use dual swords, katana, or odachi. He has a grab move that will drain anima away from you, so be careful for that. Um, but otherwise than that, I mean, he's, he's a human, you know? So something like axe, which is uh, very hefty on key damage, is going to just mess him up. And, you know, as long as you stay aggressive, you should be fine. So let's go in. Teach him a lesson. the drain. You can see how my anima just plummeted when he did that. Now that 
He's dark realm. We're dark realm. got us down so yeah even though he's a basic human um Saito can do a lot of damage as you saw at the start <clears throat> him draining my anima away that definitely hurt me a little bit there um but you know it's it's it is what it is uh so to get back to him is going to be pretty easy we're just going to use our two scrolls here so that we don't even have to fight anything to get back to him there's only a few enemies you could encounter anyway that guy right there if you want, you can rest in here to get the buff again before the boss, which is going to be helpful. Mm. If I actually had both my barrier talismans, that fight probably would have gone very differently, but Axe is uh, very key intensive. And down he goes. Much smoother fight that second time around, spamming my uh, my high stance combo. So, for completing this fight, we now unlock the ability to have on a backup guardian spirit. Now, this means you can swap between two different guardian spirits in a manner similar to swapping between weapons or ranged weapons or item loadouts or anything like that. Uh, you can also have a secondary set of soul cores. So if you have like four or five different soul cores you really like, you can put half of them on one guardian spirit, half of them on the other. But the most important thing about this is that we can now pick up passives from a backup guardian spirit. We're going to talk about that right now before we wrap up this episode up. So as you can see, your secondary guardian spirit will grant you the protection that is marked with the inheritable icon. However, its effect is less than when it's active. Um, so there is the inheritable and then there is the passive effect So right now since I have Mikami on I'm gonna hit L1 to go to my secondary and the first thing I want to point out is at the very bottom there I see fire damage yokai ability damage brute anima charge strong attack fire damage Those are just general boosts that I'm going to get for having that spirit on whatever it is uh, I would probably I mean where we're at right now yokai ability damage brute probably makes the most sense um, now that little icon you see right here, this little icon that's next to auto grave recovery or next to soul core, that means inheritable. So if, uh, <clears throat> if Shiro Hami was my main, it would be 5%. Whereas if he was my secondary, I'll get a 2.5% bonus. So you want to pick a bonus that's going to make sense both for that and the secondary, uh, where we're at right now. Hmm. This is probably going to be my best bet because uh, I'll have Anima Charge on Strong Attack. That'll go up 5%, and then I'll have a little bit of extra toughness. Um, I'm not worried about Auto Grave Recovery. If I wanted to get the Soul Core drop rate, that could be helpful, but I would have to invest into enough strength to meet that stat requirement, and at only 2.5%, it's hard to say if that's really worth it. Uh, also, while the 5% the Yokai Ability Damage on Brute will be good, 
I'm mainly using a Phantom Core with Yatsu no Kami right now, so that's not going to really make sense. So we're going to go for this one, which will give us toughness and then some Anima Charge on Strong Attack, and that should be a plenty good bonus for now. Uh, so we're going to wrap this one up here. Up next, we have the Shiftling's Widest Judgment, and we have an End to Seclusion. So this one is going to be just a quick one and done where we fight through some yokai. Uh, the Shiftling's Wide Judgment, however, we're actually going to do twice. We need to go through this mission two separate times. So we'll touch on that in the next episode, and I will see you all then.